But since we're all talking about history, um, I'm going to do things a little bit different to Pearl. I've actually done some research that I wanted to bring with me here today. Cool. So I present to you all Exhibit A. So we're all here, pretty much it seems, in agreement that feminism w was founded in, in a pure cause and that it was to, to help women. So surely the people who invented feminism, you would think, had women's best interests at heart and one after so sure. destruction. So sure. Everyone here thinks yeah. that. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah. Okay. Well, this might shock you because I also thought the same for a very, very long time Until. that the people who created feminism actually were nice people who wanted the best mm. for everyone Definitely. and just wanted equality. Okay, here's what, what really happened. So Kate Millett, she was an American feminist author and artist. Uh, she is the founder of the National Organization for Women. Her sister, Mallory, was invited to one of the first meetings that established the National Organization for Women. So this is a feminist group that has been around since the start of the feminist movement, and they basically pioneered the whole movement. At this meeting, they gathered around a large table with Kate Millett, the chairperson, and she opened the meeting with the following back and forth recitation. So this is how the beginning of the meeting went. Why are we here today, she asked. To make revolution, they answered. What kind of revolution? The cultural revolution. How do we make cultural revolution? By destroying the American family. How do we destroy the family? Wow. By destroying the American patriarch. And how do we destroy the American patriarch? By taking away his power. And how do we do that? By destroying monogamy. <laughs> and how do we destroy monogamy? By promoting promiscuity, eroticism, prostitution, and homosexuality. Well, wow. Come on. So this proceeded with a long discussion on how to advance these goals by establishing the National Organization of Women. Uh, the, the lady who was there, the leader's sister, says, it was clear they desired nothing less than the utter deconstruction of Western society. Now, anyone here can argue, well, it was one person, perhaps her and her sister had an argument, and that's why she's saying all of this, because, you know, we've got to be, we've got to be fair, it's just hearsay at this point. Another woman who was there, and actually a feminist, she's a feminist herself, uh, her name is Phyllis Chesler. She's a psychologist, feminist, and author. In her book, Politically Incorrect, she says the following about the woman who ran this meeting. Kate Millett had a shitload of charm, and in the beginning, a commanding presence. But she also had periods in which she didn't sleep. She raged at others, attempted suicide, and exploited her groupies, all while feeling victimized by them. She couldn't be counted on to remain lucid at press conferences. She also fell in love and tried to have her way quite aggressively with woman after woman, including me. And most of the women in the movement were incredibly broken by mental illness and drug abuse. That says it all then, isn't it? Like, really so, and not at peace. It was that time of the month. <laughs> the reason I have brought this up is because I too had the same belief that feminism perhaps over time has become tainted and things have gotten out of hand and now it's got to an ugly place. How long ago was this? How long ago was yeah, this? Yeah, I really want to know. <gasps> How long ago was because this? It was in the. Uh, it was before. Uh, it would have been. It was before 1930. I want to say that this 1930. happened. 1930. Someone, someone in the chat needs to find out because I don't have the dates and I'm probably. What, if that was going on in but this is the founder of the National Organization for Women, which is a, a pioneering group in feminism and one of the first waves of feminism since 1930. Something like that. Um, yeah. That is, and what's really interesting is when I was researching for this. Um, it's very hard to find this. You you have to go on, I don't know if you guys know, like DuckDuckGo. It's like a, an alternative yeah, to Google. Yeah. And you have to like change your country. If you look it up in America or in the UK, yeah, it's very hard to find. But when I changed uh, my country, I tried all different ones. I tried like Bulgaria, Russia, and a few others. When I looked from then those countries, this information was was available. But so, the point yeah, is, is that it's, it's hidden from us. And I think that's it. what feminism's aiming to do. I think it doesn't want us to know the true roots. Because mm -hmm. I believe if you, if you stand for a movement, right, and, and you say you're a feminist, mm -hmm. you deserve to know exactly what it is that you're yeah, identifying yeah, with, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. Definitely. Because otherwise, you're going around and saying, oh, I believe in feminism because you believe feminism is all about equality and in inclusion. Well, does anyone here think that this conversation sounds like equality and inclusion because to me this is why you asked about the the use of uh the word destructive mm. this is precisely why the question is worded that way because 
at least to me, it seems you all have your own opinions. To me, it seems that the foundation of this movement was in fact all about destruction. They're honest about their agenda anyway, do you know what I'm saying? Like, at least they're putting it and out And what there. you said about, um, you know, homosexuality being promoted in the media, and yeah. you made the very fair point of, you know, well, it's all about representation. Well, but what I would argue that society tends to follow, like you said, brands' trends mm. that they see. Mm. And I think rather that society has changed and the media has conformed as, as such... I think actually the media has changed because this agenda took precedence mm. and society followed. Well, exactly. And I yeah. think when you, you know, I'm speculating here. I, I don't know anything about being a homosexual. And I don't think anyone else here does either. So none of us can say for sure. But based on the evidence, and I have more research, <laughs> it seems that things like homosexuality, promiscuity, eroticism has been promoted more and more and more under the guise of feminism and that it's about empowerment mm -hmm. when really it's, it's about destruction. Exactly. Mm. That's, that's, that's just... That's what they said, in it? They were trying to destroy mm -hmm. the, the, the happy destroy home, the which is what I'm saying, destroy yeah. men. Like, before you even said men, I knew men was coming into the whole territory, do you see what I'm saying? Because obviously it's written by feminists. As well, I have a point... <clears throat> Because I have been thinking about it lately, about feminism in our society. And uh, one, as a, personally, when I think about something, I like to go in the root of it. What have caused it? And me personally, uh, because I'm also a person who is very spiritual, I believe that it came from the imbalance of the masculinity energy. Because I believe that masculinity is the first energy. It is a big energy and it is something that set the tone. It is an energy who do, who is aggressive, who is dominant. So we have also noticed that in a, most of time, how can I explain it? The richest and biggest powerful men in the society, they go for a type of woman. And those women have also certain type of characteristics. So if in the society women are having a type of behavior where they are overly sexualizing themselves and having behaviors that we are um, characteristic into not being submissive, isn't it that, um, that the masculinity is having a problem? Men have issue of directing, of taking initiative, of... Uh, no, do you know what? Some men are just man easily manipulated. You mm. see what I'm saying? Through different means. Yeah. You see what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Like if you really like a woman and she's putting it on you, yeah. then you're gonna you're gonna fall to your feet to a certain degree. You're gonna crumble and get soft. You see what I'm because saying? A strong man herself. that knows what he wants and sees through all that, he ain't buying that. Yeah. You see but, what I'm saying? Because a man is a man. man. You see what I'm a manly man look at you like woman like just you know said, your role relax, just say what relax, I'm saying like, yes. like you ain't you ain't just gonna listen to a, if you're a real man and you've been brought up to know how to look after a woman and treat a woman like nothing a woman's gonna bring to you is gonna like have you falling at your Simping. feet you see what I'm saying mm. like as a man like you're gonna project your energy onto a woman just say what I'm saying and a woman should know how to like take gratitude in that just say what I'm yeah. saying and I get your simple. point, but what I want to really emphasize is that you talked about a man who is confident. Yeah. But are men confident? Nowadays? Yeah, but look, look, if you're not all men are confident. Yeah. Mm. yeah but and the thing is, I, like, I would oh, even oh. argue, do men, can men be confident in a world where masculinity is punished? Mm. Yes. Yeah, exactly. You just got to be a man. Think, then. Yeah, but I, and, I, I, and I think be what you're supposed to be. Is like, that, you know what I'm saying? Don't be sitting yeah. out here talking about, oh, yeah, she took my power away from me when she cheated. Because, bro, like, the bullshit ain't going to stop till the casket drops. Mm. So why are we out here living in fear of what's going to happen to us? Do you see what I'm saying? Everybody mm -hmm. sits there and mopes after their ex. and the, But psh, really and truly, there's always someone better. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? We, we live in a world of how many millions of people. You're going to let one person affect your life? Do you see what I'm saying? You're going to sit down and feel like you cannot disconnect. Like, look how many friends we had from primary school to secondary school to college that we don't, don't, that we, we don't even him. chat to no more. <laughs> what, did we cry over them? Was we sitting down, bawling, talking about, oh, Johnny or Tiffany or... No, we didn't. They're getting on with their life now and you're doing you. So to be disconnected from a human being that doesn't bring any kind of prevalence Substance or value to, to your table. life mm. is stupid. You're out here wasting your time.
like time is money. You know what I'm saying? Time is your currency. Like my my my, my clothing line is called No Vision Seems Impossible because I think up things that I want to do in life and I'll make it happen make it until, until I can't do it and there's no blood in my veins for me to run and do and achieve things in life. I'm going to get it. I don't care if, if you're in my past or you're in my present. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to get it. Whether you're riding with me or you're not, I don't need a woman to be telling me what to do because I've got my own brain and we've all been grown and known what's right from wrong. You see what I'm saying? So if we're not following these things and people are acting like, bro... <laughs> Like, if you're not learning from your own mistakes or others, then who are you learning from? Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and that's straight up real. Like, everybody has their different agendas and where they want to go in life. Follow your path. But just like we said, don't be trying to, don't be trying to be toxic in other people's life. Do you see what I'm saying?